Here's a sample problem of an ice table that involves the 5% approximation. So we only use this when we're dealing with a scenario where K is less than 1. Okay, if K is less than 1, we're assuming that the reaction is very reactant favored, which means that whatever my reactant is, is going to be present pretty much at the same amount at equilibrium. In other words, the initial concentration of those reactants and the equilibrium concentration of those reactants is essentially the same, or very close to the same. So that can simplify my math, and that can make my arithmetic easier to deal with. And a lot of times, this saves you from having to deal with that dreaded quadratic equation, if you can make this approximation. So let's do this problem. I've given you the reaction. I've given you the value of K. And I ask, what are the equilibrium concentrations of all species when a 0.65 molar solution decomposes into these two products? Okay. Because K is less than 1, we're going to do the 5% approximation. So we're going to set up our normal ice table. And we're going to say, okay, this is the initial concentration. Because I wasn't given any information about the products initially, we're assuming that they are zero, okay? Because we don't know anything about the products yet, so we're assuming they are zero. We're assuming that this is going to go down by some quantity x, and this is going to go up by some quantity x, right? Now here's where the 5% approximation comes in. We're going to assume that x is so small that when we subtract it from 0.65, it's still essentially 0.65. Like, we're going to assume that x is such a small number that when we subtract it out, we might get 0.6499999, right? That's essentially 0.65. So we're going to assume that at equilibrium, the concentration is the same as where it began. That is the fundamental theory of the 5% approximation. So, since I was given the value of k in the problem, now I just plug in x squared, right, because this was x and this was x, and we're going to use 0.65 as the bottom number. When we do our math, we come up with 2.9 times 10 to the negative second. When we plug in that value of x and subtract it out, well, we're not going to subtract it out here. We add it, we add it. Now we just need to ask ourselves, does the 5% approximation work, or were we incorrect to assume this? So here's what you need to do. You just need to ask yourself, what's the range of acceptable answers? So 5% of 0.65 is 0.033, okay? 5% times 0.65, that's what I get. So the range of acceptable answers for my final answer is 0.65 plus 0.033, which is 6.617, all the way up to 0.65 plus 0.033. Okay, so in other words, the range of answers that I would accept and still believe that this approximation was valid is this range right here. So when I do subtract it out, I get 0.621, which is in that range. And so I come to the conclusion. Now the reason it's 0.029 is just I rounded here. Right? This is 3 times 10 to the negative 2 versus 0.029. So this is just a rounded version of this. When we subtract that out, this is within the acceptable range. So I conclude that it was okay to use this approximation. If you come up with an answer that's outside that range, you're in trouble. But I'm just going to tell you right now, 99 times out of 100, if K is less than 1, you're perfectly fine to make the 5% approximation. Every now and then something strange might happen. But by far and large, the vast majority of time, if you're dealing with K less than 1, you can just go ahead and assume that at equilibrium, the equilibrium concentration of your reactant really doesn't change all that much. And so that's how we use the 5% approximation.